Leo is that one Vocaloid producer that everyone knows. When you talk about Vocaloid with someone who vaguely knows the concept or idea, there is a 70% chance they're going to name a song by Leo, whether they realize it or not. And honestly, you can't blame them. His songs are literally everywhere. Love is War, Black Rock Shooter, Mel, Oz and Ends. Honestly, I could keep going, but you get the idea. But not only is Leo one of Vocaloid's most popular producers, he's also one of the most important and influential as well. Honestly, he's one of the people that's responsible for Vocaloid just being here today. Back in 2007, there definitely was popular songs being posted to Nico Nico, but there wasn't a lot of producers putting out consistent hits on there. Leo was one of the first producers along people like Oyster Project and Casey Livetune to do this. Like many producers, as a teenager, Leo was heavily influenced by music. But instead of pursuing his dreams as a musician, he decided to go into the electrical field and stay there for 6 years before hitting a breaking point. But luckily around that time he discovered Hatsune Miku and began his career as a Vocaloid producer. And he always seemingly changed everything about Vocaloid with Mel. I won't get into it much since I've already made a whole video about this song, but for those of you who don't know, the Mel sensation mentioned in Dune is very much a real thing. The song was a phenomenon in Vocaloid, and became the standard for songs being made going forward. But Ryo would only keep the ball rolling from there. Over the course of a year, he would release two of the most popular songs in Vocaloid history, those songs being World Is Mine and Black Rock Shooter. By 2008, Leo was honestly the king of the charts. Over the course of a year, he put out four songs that consistently stayed within the top 30. Not only that, but he had an unprecedented influence on the Vocaloid scene as well. It almost seemed like every week there would be a cover or a parody coming out of his songs. So where would this unstoppable producer go next, you may be asking? Well, honestly... Nowhere. After re-releasing When the First Love Ends in December, the community was more than ready for Ryo to drop another hit, but 2009 passed, and nothing. It was almost like he vanished. So what happened exactly? Well, one thing you have to understand about producers back then versus now, is that the majority of them did not view Vocaloid as an ending point. They had higher aspirations, and in their eyes Vocaloid was only an opportunity to get their music out there to a bigger audience, so they could get a deal with a major label. And that's why you see so many popular producers leave after only a year or two of putting out songs. And for Dio, that's exactly what happened. He only needed to put out about 5 massively popular songs before he got picked up by Sony, where he ended up forming the J-pop group Supercell as a result. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. How dare these producers just use Vocaloid, they never really cared about it. But honestly that isn't true. I mean they owe their whole careers to Vocaloid to be honest, it was their starting point. They would be nowhere without it and many of them view Nico Nico as their home. That's why they always come back every once in a while to make new songs. I mean, you have to respect the fact that they had other dreams they wanted to achieve, and that you could only do one thing for so long. Now, Dio was a special case, as he was still involved with Vocaloid a fair bit after he left, at least compared to his peers. In 2009, he would release the self-titled debut album Supercell, which featured 12 songs all written by Dio. And on top of that, all the vocals were provided by Miku as well. Now I know for many of you, I don't even have to say anything more about this album, as Supercell went on to become the most iconic Vocaloid album to ever be released. For those of you who don't know, this album is so iconic that even 10 years after its release, that if you went up to any Vocaloid fan and asked them which Vocaloid album should I start with, they'll probably say this album. But not only that, over the next couple of years, Dio would actually make reappearances in the community for the Project Diva games. He made Koichi Muite Baby for Project Diva 2nd in 2010, and then Sekira Noon Graffiti for Project Diva Extended, and then in 2012, Odds and Ends for Project Diva F, and finally, Sumi no Namai in 2016 for X. So let me ask you one question. Does popularity ruin music? One of the most interesting aspects about Leo's music is despite only being here for over a year, and making around 5 popular songs during that time period, he manages to still be a major talking point in Vocaloid even a decade later. And you would think after all that time, some producer would come to take his spotlight? But no, he's seemingly been ingrained as Vocaloid's frontman. And while I think this is something that we should definitely celebrate, I think it's also caused his fair share of issues as well. Alright, I've been listening to Vocaloid for close to a decade now, and I can honestly tell you I am pretty much burnt out on listening to Dio's music. If you want a better idea of what I mean, it's kind of like how over the years you'll always hear Queen's most popular songs on the radio, until you hit a point where you just immediately skip their music. It's just nearly impossible to pick up any piece of Vocaloid media 
and did not have at least one of his songs in it. But there is one song in particular that always comes to my mind when I think about this. Oh yeah. You really think I was gonna make a video about Dio and not talk about World Is Mine? In America, it is the go-to song when promoting Hatsune Miku. And I honestly think that was mostly due to chance. I remember a couple of years ago when you typed in Hatsune Miku on the YouTube, there was always this one video that always came up with like 20 million views that was titled something like, Hatsune Miku, the world's most famous virtual pop star. And you can guess what song was playing. Now this is mostly me speculating, but I think Vocaloid didn't really become popular over here in the States until around 2009. And that's literally at the tail end of Theo's career. And as a result, I think his music got ingrained with Hatsune Miku over here. So it just became absolutely impossible to escape that song. I mean, fan animations, video games, concerts, figures, even Donald Trump covers? But because of that, I feel like some of the heart that went into that song is just gone. It's more like an empty marketing shell used to move products to me now than this iconic song that was used to help shape Vocaloid. Not only that, but Vocaloid has clearly caused its fair share of mental illness for Dio as well. I mean, you only need to listen to Oz and Ends to figure that out. The song highlights how over the course of five years, Dio grew to uncontrollably detest Vocaloid and Miku. While he has grown into mass popularity because of Vocaloid, he's also found that he can't escape it either. People would badmouth him behind his back just because he couldn't create music without hiding behind the image of someone else, and that slowly ate at him. But there was one thing that no one can ever take away from Dio, no matter how hard they try. And it's the reason that makes him different from everyone else. It's the one thing that caused him to change Vocaloid forever as well. And that's passion. When being interviewed for Miku's 10th anniversary, Dio stated that intensity was always a big part of making music for him. You need to create something that has the intensity to save the lives of the people who listen to it, or there's no point in making it. If a song didn't elect some sort of emotion, that was the greatest evil of all. And I believe it. Let's look at Odds and Ends again. Yes, this is a song that has themes of depression and hatred, but if you look more closely, it's a song focused on redemption and forgiveness as well. Bale has always considered himself to be an unlucky person, but he has never once painted a picture of himself as someone who would give up. He never gave up on his dreams of music when he was backed into a corner in a job he hated. Instead, he found Vocaloid. And even when he thought that one thing he owed his success to could no longer give him joy, he never stopped until he found his happiness again. And the irony of all this is that I know where Rio is coming from. Because, well, I share that same exact relationship with his music. As I burnt out on his songs, like World Is Mine, I gradually grew to detest them as well. I dismissed them as mainstream or overrated. But all that changed when I listened to Melt again and I realized something incredible. When that chorus hit for the first time, I got chills down my arms like it was the first time I listened to it. And suddenly I felt like that 14 year old boy again who was simply mesmerized by the idea of Hatsune Miku. For years, I've been viewing Ryo's music in this bleak light, that we were only using his music for marketing. But now I'm starting to ask myself again, Maybe we aren't using his music because it's profitable, but instead maybe it's the fact that there's just something special and timeless about it that just can't be replicated somewhere else. So if you are someone like me who doesn't see the appeal anymore, do me a favor and go back and listen to those songs again, because you might be surprised by what you hear. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, Ubnub here. I am so sorry this took so long to come out. Um, I'm taking a summer course right now at my university and I've kind of just been in a living hell for the past couple of weeks. Believe it or not, I've actually been working on this video the whole time as well. It's just that editing takes a lot longer to do than it used to. That being said though, this was actually supposed to just be a two-parter, but I've decided to turn this into a trilogy now and do a third video on Oz and Ends. So look forward to that. That should be coming out sometime soon. But uh, thank you for your patience, guys, and thank you as well for the support. Um, at the time I'm recording this video, my last video on Mount has had around 130 views, and I can't thank you guys enough. I honestly never expected this channel to get as big as it did in such a short amount of time. So, truly thank you all of you for all your support. Alright, I think that's about it guys. Thanks. Bye.